Merry Christmas and welcome back. I'm John Bishop and I'd like to welcome you to my second unboxing video. Following the Halfway to Black Friday 2019 Vinegar Syndrome sale, they just recently finished their Black Friday sale, which of course meant they had new exclusive movies on the site to sell. They had the Candy Snatchers, they had the Angel Collection, the original trilogy featuring Angel, Avenging Angel, and Part 3, the final chapter. They had a, a Blu-ray exclusive, Savage Dawn, which starred Lance Henriksen and Richard Lynch and George Kennedy. There was also the Vice Academy box set, which features Ginger Lynn Allen and, uh, of course, Linnea Quigley. But, unfortunately, those ones I did not pick up in my recent haul. I did pick up a few titles. I'm going to try and go through this as fast as I can. This is going to be a one-take video. It's not going to be a two-parter like the last one. And uh, let me just start by introducing you to the titles that I picked up outside of the sale in between the half of the Black Friday sale and the current Black Friday sale. I got quite a few, so I'm just going to rush through them as fast as I can. One of them I picked up was a uh, Nice little trauma acquisition from 1986 called Nightmare Wee Gun. There you go. Good look at that. The movie, of course, directed by Henry Sala, and it stars Dale Midkiff, who would go on to be Lewis Creed in the original Pet Cemetery, directed by Mary Lambert from 1989. And a young Robert John Burke is in this too. Andrea Thompson from NYPD Blue is in this movie too. It is one of the stranger titles I have seen from Vinegar Syndrome. And of course, it was a trauma acquisition, but even that, knowing that, it's still a pretty crazy movie. I picked up uh, one of their packages. There was a four movie package. I think it was August or September, I can't remember. But it had a couple of them. Hell Comes the Frog Town, of course. The great Rowdy Roddy Piper apocalypse movie. Also starring Rory Calhoun, who is an angel, and Sandal Bergman. Also, the notorious Gerard Damiano porno puppet movie, Let My Puppets Come. Interesting little movie. Gotta thank the cinema snob for introducing me to that one. Oh, uh, let's see what else. There's also Hellmaster. Douglas Schultz's film starring the great John Saxon, which I've already done a text review on. You can check it out over at mindofframes.blogspot.com. And if all works out, I'm going to start doing more video reviews from now on, just to keep myself disciplined in terms of writing, and to keep myself disciplined in terms of writing about the movies, keeping my opinions short, sweet, and to the point. Uh, the Nico Masterakis machine rolls on. He's been getting quite the uh, resurgence through uh, physical media. Of course, there was uh, Arrow Video doing the Zero Boys and Island of Death. And uh, Vinegar Syndrome got a few of his productions. I already uh, did Grandmother's House earlier, which is a film I like. This one's not as good as Grandmother's House. I still have to see In the Cold of the Night. I didn't pick that one up yet. But Dark Room. Here we go. This is not directed by Nico Masterakis, only produced by him. Credit director Terence O'Hara. And uh, it's an interesting little, uh, they call it an American Giallo, but it's just a slasher flick. Giallos are crazy stylish, colorful, and it's a genre unto itself, just like slashers are, so I'm not going to confuse the two. Uh, speaking of which, there is a movie from a uh, Jean Christian Ingvordsen, Dutch director, I believe, called Blue Vengeance from 1989. Wonderful little movie. It's about a, a metalhead who escapes from the uh, criminally insane institute of New York, finds out his band, his favorite band, has sold their soul to rock and roll only to work menial jobs, and uh, decides to kill them off one by one. And the cop who uh, arrested him when he was 16 goes above the law to try to capture him again with the help of a rock photographer. It's, uh, I like it as much as Grandmother's House. I've been on Letterboxd trying to put ratings to movies now. 
I'm going to be more active on that in the new year. That's my one New Year's resolution. And I hope to live up to that. Everybody says they're going to quit smoking, go exercise. My goal is to get on Letterboxd and go crazy like I haven't done before. I've been too silent for long. Um, let's see. The Great Putney Swope. Yes. The Truth and Soul movie from Robert Downey Sr. And uh, this is definitely one of Vinegar Syndrome's prestige titles compared to the more obscure film as they pick up. But yeah, this one's already been released by Criterion, so that's pretty insane. Like Sweet Sweetback's Badass Song and Liquid Sky. It's one of those cornerstone movies, I would say. And a very welcome addition to the canon. Another welcome addition was a 1984 film called The Passing. I believe directed by James Hucker, and it's a story about two old men who uh, are approaching death's door, but one of them takes part in a bizarre experiment involving a, a man accused of murder, and it's a body switch type of scenario. It's got some great interaction between the two actors playing the old men. It's got loads of bizarre sci-fi style to it. And I really do like The Passing a lot. This is from 1984 once again. Uh, Taking Tiger Mountain. This one I've seen bits of. I haven't watched it all the way yet, so... This is probably going to be one of the many that I watch now that i got 20 more movies. Some of them I previewed in advance of the package I just got. So, I have nothing really to say about this, but young Bill Paxton is in this for me, rest in peace. Another one that I've watched bits and pieces of looks to be just as strange as uh, Taking Tiger Mountain. It's called Decoder. Here we go. A film by Misha. And it stars Christian F., members of Einsters and Newbotten, who also do on the soundtrack. And William S. Burroughs appears in this one, too. So, yeah. This is going to be one that I'm going to have to buckle my seatbelt for, just like Taking Tiger Mountain. Like I said, Vinegar Syndrome, they put out cornerstone movies, they put out obscure horror and porn, but every once in a while they'll throw like a real curveball, which is where I would say Decoder, Taking Tiger Mountain, and The Passing to a lesser extent. That one's the most accessible of the three. Without further ado, I'm opening this package for the first time. Like I said, this is going to be a one-take video. I'm going to try and get this out of the way so I can enjoy all the movies that I picked up over the course of maybe three months. It's going to take some time to really watch them and to review them. Like I said, if I can do video reviews, that would be great. This is my second video, so who knows how it's going to work out. I'm going to cut open the package. Like I said, on top of the ones that I didn't pick up yet, the Candy Snatchers, the Angel Collection, the Vice Academy Collection, uh, Savage Dawn. There are quite a few that I missed. Mostly I was just watching to see which ones were selling the fastest. Because there are quite a few big sellers during that Vinegar Syndrome Black Friday sale. And I hope that anyone who watches this, who participated in the Black Friday sale, picked up all the titles they wanted to get. There was quite a few that were selling low. There were surprising ones that were selling low, like Pledge Night. That one's got a pretty uh, big reception from what I've seen on the sites. Down to quite a few units, a few hundred units, I think, in the slipcover edition. And there's also um, Blood Mania, Point of Terror. Well, I'm just going to open this up. Quite a few of them I picked up during the sale. By the way, I got my Vinegar Syndrome button on, so I'm in a mood to celebrate. Wow, they got the bubble wrap on and everything. Two bushels of bubble wrap. So this is like my Christmas video in a way, and I'm really glad that I got to participate in the latest Vinegar Syndrome sale. Just the invoice, I believe, showing all the titles I picked up. Yep. Like I said, I already got my button. I didn't get to do the subscriber deal, which they have, the yearly subscriber deal. 
I find it much better to uh, pick and choose which titles I want to get. Maybe next Black halfway to Black Friday sale, I'll go the whole hog and uh, get myself a subscription. But right now, let's take a look at the titles. Looks like 20 in all that I picked up, so I'm going to go through each one hopefully a minute per. Save time. Like I said, this is not going to be a long one. And it's one take anyway, so here we go. Want to start with the uh, big one? One of the uh, Black Friday sale exclusives that really sold well. And of course it would. The Great Tammy and the T Rex. Directed by Stuart Raffel. Man who made The Wilderness Family and uh, High Risk from 1981. But of course he's best known for uh, films like The Ice Pirates, Notorious Mac and Me, which is the kind of movie that you need to watch with MST3K because to watch it alone, you're going to go crazy. He also made Mannequin 2. But this one, interesting little movie, a high school student gets uh, thrown into a lion's pit by a jealous ex-boyfriend of uh, Denise Richards. The uh, boy, by the way, is played by young Paul Walker, rest in peace too. And uh, a mad scientist, played by Mannequin 2's own Terry Kaiser, uh, decides to remove Paul Walker's brain and put it into a robotic dinosaur. This came after Jurassic Park and Carnosaur. So this is more of the cheesy comedy spectrum of the uh, official trilogy, or the non-official trilogy. Like I said, there's quite a lot of movies that, yeah, come out at the same time that ride trends, and... Uh, this is one of them, Tammy and the T-Rex. It's got nice bonus features, including audio commentary with Raphael and the producer. It's got a new interview with Denise Richards, a new interview with the actor Sean Whalen, who has a memorable role in this. Uh, he is, of course, Roach from The People Under the Stairs. Wes Craven, another rest in peace. Also in the cast is uh, John Franklin, who is in Shown of the Corn. He's Isaac in that film and several others. There's also a stereotypical, there's like a Hollywood Montrose type, so Raffle's not working too far from Mannequin 2 territory, but this is one of the big ones, Tammy and the T-Rex, that 3D cover. There's also a 4K edition coming out soon, it's their first Vinegar Syndrome 4K, Ultra 4K release. Also another big one that sold, but the movie you ever hear about a movie whose reputation is so big among cult circles that when you watch it for yourself, you just kind of figure, meh. That's kind of what happened with me and uh, this little film called Spookies here, which I still respect in a certain way. This is a very odd duck of a movie, but unlike most Vinegar Syndrome movies where the weirdness is baked into the concept, like say Blood Beat, which had orgasms, samurai warriors, and uh, psychic showdowns, and uh, other weird movies, even Nightmare Weekend included. This one became weird because of the post-production brouhaha that went on behind the scenes. The film started out as Twisted Souls by a couple of unknown filmmakers. Uh, the producer, who uh, is the British uh, producer of he was Michael Lee, I think he is. He founded Vipco, which is one of the notorious early British home video labels, which got caught in the uh, video nasties fervor. He took the film away from the uh, original directors, handed it over to uh, a group of porn people. They shot footage that had nothing to do with the original story. The directors were notoriously disappointed and angry about it. There's actually a documentary on the uh, Blu-ray. This is a two Blu-ray set. This is not a combo pack, so... There's two Blu-rays and all. And on the second one, you get two documentaries. One on Michael Lee himself, and the other featuring a cast and crew from the original Twisted Souls production talking about the making of the film and their thoughts on how they got stiffed by the producer. Uh, it was made... Uh, by a couple directors, one of them, of course, being uh, Michael Gingold, managing, former managing editor of Fangoria, and writer at places like Rue Morgue and Time Out. 
He's one of the great genre writers from the past 20 odd years, and uh, I've listened to him on the uh, 40 Second Street Forever commentaries. Very learned guy. He co directed the uh, Twisted Tale, the Unmaking of Spookies documentary, which uh, also was directed by Glenn Baisley. So it's Michael Gingold and Glenn Baisley. There's also a couple of uh, screening videos, like Q&As from the uh, horror show screening and the introduction at the Alamo Draft House screening. But the film itself is certainly an odd duck. Everybody remembers the uh, muck monsters, and if you see the movie, you'll know what I mean. That was definitely something the original filmmakers hated. There is actually a piece on the Dissolve, the former AV Club shoot offshoot website, which uh, has a really great oral history about the making of uh, Twisted Souls. So if you come into this knowing that article, which includes commentary from everybody involved, almost everybody involved during the Twisted Souls production, even the uh, third credit director, uh, Jeannie Joseph, appears to talk about the experience. You'll know the Muck Monsters were definitely something added on to the producer's benefit. Or at least what they did with the Muck Monsters that uh, the two directors who made Twisted Soul shot. I'm going to go through that one fast. Spookies. One of the big ones. Uh, let's see. Picked up quite a few that I've been meaning to pick up recently. Here is uh, from New World Pictures, The Vineyard, which is uh, directed by James Hong and stars him. Of course, one of the uh, great Asian-American actors, I believe, yeah, he was in a, to list his credits would be too long, Hannibal Chu from Blade Runner, Lo Pan from Big Trouble in Little China, Jeff from Wayne's World 2, uh, he was also snotty in Revenge of the Nerds 2, he was in Blade, he was in a Balls of Fury, the moral be the cricket, take the cricket from my hand bit. You squashed my lucky cricket? But this is a... Uh, this is one I still have to see. This is a... Uh, this is a mad scientist, mad doctor, island full of the damned type movie. The vineyard right here. This, Without the slipcover, you get a different view of James Hong and myself. And they have uh, a new interview with James Hong and... Uh, the producer actor Harry Mock, and several other new interviews, but this one I have yet to see. Like I said, it's a New World Pictures release, and it's uh, going to be interesting to watch the man from Blade Runner, Big Trouble, and uh, Wayne's World 2 try his hand at uh, an island occult film. So we got that. We got, I should show you, ah. This is perhaps one of my favorites, the one I picked up that I sampled previously. Unmasked Part 25. Here we go. Anders Holm directed it. It was a... Uh, here we go. Here we go. It's a takeoff of Friday the 13th involving a hockey mask serial killer who uh, finds love. And it's a... Uh, it kind of reminds me of Psychos and Love, another Vinegar Syndrome release. But, a ser but the serial killer finds love with the blind woman, so there's Toxic Avenger thrown in for good measure, too. And uh, it's made, it was directed by a Swede, produced by a Canadian, filmed entirely in London, England, with the British cast for the most, most part. I know Gregory Cox plays uh, Jackson as a Lord Byron quoting sexually confused middle-aged slasher with a lineage of evil that runs in the family. And uh, I think it's a really funny movie. It's a nice little takeoff, of, like I said, Friday the 13th. The character he plays, Jackson, is uh, technically an in-universe star of serial killer movies, so he inspired his own franchise. And it's at part 25, and the punchline to the uh, movie, I won't spoil for you, but suffice to say, it doesn't work out between Jackson and his new blind girlfriend. I want to talk about this one more when I do a video review. I really do think it's a, it's a sleeper. It's definitely something to see. 
Let's see, we got, oh, one of the big ones that sold, Pledge Night. Let's see. Go. This one sold quite a lot. It was selling like hotcakes compared to many of the other recent ones. I mean, I don't even think Putney Swope sold out yet. But, Brothers to the End, the very end. I haven't seen the new Black Christmas remake yet, so I will just take it on faith that uh, those who were disappointed in the, that film will definitely want to watch Pledge Night as a, as a far less pretentious alternative to that. But I say go watch the original Black Christmas and Bob Clark's Death Dream if you really hate the new Black Christmas. Watch those two movies. Those are fantastic. I would give them five stars out of five any day of the week. This one, I gave three when I put it on Letterboxd when I watched it before the package came. It's, uh, it's written by, what's her name? Joyce Snyder, who came out of porn too. She researched the uh, frat house uh, scene herself and put what she found in this movie. It's still a bizarre supernatural horror film with comedy elements about a, a hazed uh, late 60s uh, freshman who got put in a tub full of acid and comes back in the present day to make life hell for a new group of uh, fraternity initiates and their uh, fraternity masters. Pledge Night. Here we go. This one I'm surprised. I thought this one sold out, so... There's quite a few movies that actually got picked by uh, Siskel and Ebert as Dogs of the Week. Um, let's see. I haven't done any yet that I can think of. Nope. Here's uh, one that Siskel picked as a Dog of the Week. He talked about Nancy Kwan, the lead actress from Wonder Woman, how she was the lead in this film, and it was all downhill from the late 60s when she starred in a couple of movies, a flower drum song, and Susie Wong, I think, there was a movie, something around that. But yeah, this one stars Ross Hagen also. Of course it stars Ross Hagen. And it stars Vic Diaz and Sid Haig. So we got a nice Jack Hill, Roger Corman connection going on here. Roberta Collins also, I remember from quite a few Corman movies. Um, Sid Haig may rest in peace. There's actually a... Hmm... Robert Vincent O'Neill made this one. The guy who made Angel. Interesting. So if you like Angel, the Angel series, either one, two, or three, or either a combination or all of the above, you might want to check this one out. It's uh, Wonder Woman. And Sid Haig is another one, rest in peace. So it's got a Q&A from a 2007 screening at the New Beverly that features the director and Nancy Kwan, and Ross Hagen from the Side Hackers, and uh, Roberta Collins, and Sid Haig himself. And there's another Robert Vincent O'Neill movie that I picked up too, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, like I said, this is Wonder Women, not Wonder Woman. It's another thing Siskel pointed out. It's not to be confused with the comic book or the TV show, but he said, uh, if you didn't know the difference, and some Sharpie distributor came along wanting to sell you the ticket, that would happen. Um, let's see. We got... Here's some of the few that ran out pretty low during the Black Friday sale. Here's three of the Rudy Ray Moore movies. Those were starting to sell pretty fast. I believe Petey Wheatstraw is the one that sold out completely. That one went down to zero pretty fast. There's still 500 copies of Dolomite available, so I put that one on hold, but Petey Wheatstraw. This is his third theatrical feature for Rudy Ray Moore, The Dolomite Man. Oh yeah, it's got trailers for uh, the two other movies I picked up from the Rudy Ray Moore Vinegar Syndrome collection. Disco Godfather and The Human Tornado. Those two didn't sell as drastically as Petey Wheatstraw, you can still probably pick up copies once the site goes back online. If you're a big fan of the uh, classic 70s black cinema, and if you're uh, interested to see, uh, read about the cult legacy of Rudy Ray Moore, that's definitely something. All three of these movies, right there. 
like I said, I'm going to try and go through this as fast as I can. I'm already uh, quite a few titles deep, and I'm halfway there. We got another Rick Sloan movie. Let's talk about Blood Theater. This is one of uh, Rick's first movies, I believe. And of course, he made Hobgoblins, another Vinegar Syndrome title. On top of that, there's the Vice Academy trilogy. Like I said, the Linnea Quigley, Ginger Lynn Allen trilogy. This one's got a, a release date of 1984. And I believe this is Sloan's first film. And it also stars the great Mary Warrenov of Eating Raoul, Death Race 2000, Night of the Comet, Sugar Cookies, another Vinegar Syndrome title act. And uh, it's got another uh, New Beverly Cinema related uh, interview featurette with uh, Rick Sloan and, act and Mary Warrenov and two of the actors from the, uh, this is a double feature, you're getting two Rick Sloan epics for the price of uh, one. And the other movie is called The Visitants, and it's his sophomore effort, and it's uh, set in the neon-colored 50s and chronicles the hijinks which ensue following the theft of a ray gun by a teenage boy. Did I just buy a laser blast? I don't know. That sounds like you remade laser blast. And uh, all of a sudden, the MST3K flashbacks are coming back. I don't think Eddie Deason's in The Visitants, though. I don't know if Eddie Deason's in any of the Vinegar Syndrome titles. Weird things you think about when you're trying to come up with uh, thoughts about movies you haven't seen yet. But I... Here we go. This one is a blind buy, too. Like I said, quite a few of the ones I picked up, I've seen. The others, I'm going to get my hands dirty eventually and talk about those. Let's talk about two of the other uh, movies that came along with the uh, Unmasked Part 25 package. Knock these out pretty quick. We got Beyond the Door 3 from a producer of Video Asinitis, part of his unofficial trilogy of movies. Like I've said, the first one was made in 1974, I believe. I know it was... Uh, a ripoff of The Exorcist and Rosemary's Baby, starring Juliette Mills. And uh, the second one, of course, is uh, just the Mario Bava film from 1978, I believe, called Shock, that they retitled Beyond the Door 2. And that one, Roger Ebert picked as a dog of the week. You can look that up on uh, YouTube if you want. The third one, I believe, came out in the late 80s, 1989 roughly. One of the last really cheesy but entertaining Italian horror films. Um, of course, Troll 2 gets all the glory, but this one's got its own gonzo highlights. It's got Bo Svensson, of course, the second Buford Pusser, and genre great from Inglorious Bastards. And uh, it's about a group of kids who get taken on a trip to uh, Slovakia, I believe. Or, you, yes, you, a part of Yugoslavia, where they get embroiled in a bizarre cult who uh, go after the virginal heroine, played by Mary Connert, and uh, the kids escape, they get on a train, but the train gets uh, possessed by some strange voodoo magic and starts to have a will of its own. And one of the great scenes that Michael Gingle mentioned in the trailer for Beyond the Door 1 on one of the 42nd Street compilations involves the train getting off the tracks, chasing a couple of the escaped kids, who are not in the train, killing them, and uh, getting back on the tracks. And this has uh, got a couple interviews with the uh, director, I believe. Yeah, Jeff Quitney. And it's got an interview with Bo Svensson. Beyond the Door 3. And of course, there's uh, Berserker. This one I also saw in advance. These two I did manage to catch before, uh, before I picked up this uh, package today. These just came today, so on top of being a one-take video, trying to keep it tight and simple, I'm just winging it. As per life, you just gotta wing it. But this one, uh, it's got George Buck Flower. Ain't that something? One of the great actors who played uh, Transients. He was an also in They Live and Back to the Future, and if you know genre cinema, you know the guy. Um, it's, uh, 
directed by, written and directed by Jefferson Richard from 1987. And it's uh, about a group of kids on a camping trip who are beset by either a grizzly bear or a viking. There's suspense as to which one of them is the murderer. There's already been quite a few deaths. We see an opening scene involving an old couple getting mauled or slaughtered. Like I said, it's a mystery. And uh, this one has perhaps one of the most, the best things about Berserker here. Like Night Train to Terror or The Mutilator or Pod People. It's got one of those really bizarre montages set to a song that is so cheesy you'll be humming it for days. And I think the song is called Stop per Slash You're a Cool Dude or just Stop Slash Cool Dude. It's on YouTube if you want to look it up. It is insanely... It's one of those moments that, yeah, make genre cinema be cinema living for. And uh, I will refrain from singing you a few bars of Cool Dude or Stop Slash Cool Dude like I did in the last issue when I sang Everybody But You from Night Train to Terror. Um, Norman Warren, the British director of Satan's Slave, he has quite a few Vinegar Syndrome titles. You can pick up Terror or Prey, Alien Prey as they call it, still. I think Bloody New Year might be one of the ones that have sold out completely. I actually went to Zia Records in Mesa and found a couple copies on the shelf. So I don't know if my claims of it being sold out are valid. Like I said, I didn't expect to find a Wonder Woman on the site, but hey, that one I picked up when I saw it. And Bloody New Year, this is his uh, 1987 film. I believe it's one of his last movies. Um, it's a film about a group of kids who uh, escape from a bunch of carny workers, head out in a boat to a bizarre deserted island that appears to be stuck in a time warp. There's plenty of ghosts, and there's lots of period 50s, 60s details. It's uh, not one of Norman J. Warren's best films, to be honest. I sought out Satan's Slave, and I think that one's pretty decent. I wouldn't call it a great film. Terror is, of course, the one you want to see if you're a big slasher connoisseur. And uh, Prey is uh, Barry Stokes' glory at an alien lesbian extravaganza. I believe he also made uh, Inseminoid, which I believe is not a video. It's getting picked up by a different distributor, but you can check that out if you want to. But this is uh, one of the ones that, yeah, I was starting to sell pretty low, so I snatched up all the chance. Bloody New Year. Let's see, we got another uh, slipcover edition, and one that was selling pretty fast, and this one I've been itching to see for the longest time. I still haven't watched it yet. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a party when I watch Raw Force. This is one of those ones that you gotta just go in there blind. Don't watch it on YouTube. Don't spoil it for yourself. Enjoy it the way it was meant to be seen on home video, with a actual player, an actual disc, and plenty of uh, liquor and pizza to keep you company. Of course, this is a 1982 film. Yep. 1982, I was thinking 81 for a second. Directed by a guy named Edward Murphy, not to be confused with Eddie, of course. It stars one of the legends of a B movie cinema, Cameron Mitchell. It's also got Jillian Kessner, who was uh, the heroine from Firecracker, if you remember that film. The world's the film where uh, she uh, goes around trying to find her missing sister but gets accosted by bad guys and has to fight a group of thugs while dressed in basically her underwear or less. Firecracker, that film I think had Vic Diaz in it too, as does Raw Force and Wonder Woman. So we're getting a nice chunk of Filipino sleaze. Um, and Raw Force, this is uh, one that I've heard quite a bit about. I am finally getting to watch it, so wish me luck. We got another trauma acquisition, and this is one of the movies that, of course, got referenced in Scream 2. When, uh, he got, when Randy got asked, what's your favorite scary movie, and he countered back with, what's your favorite scary movie? House and Sorority Row, Final Exam, Cutting Class. I don't think that one was listed, but should have been. 
but that's a high school flick. Scream 2 took place in college, so this is strictly college-themed ho horror movies. Not Pledge Night, though, so that's a big anomaly there. But one of them you listed was, of course, Splatter U from 1984. One of the uh, early trauma movies to get a Vinegar Syndrome release, and it's not really an acquisition. It wasn't made independently of the trauma brand, like, say, Graduation Day or Night Beast. And uh, it's, got, it's directed by Richard W. Haynes, who is a familiar name in early trauma history. And uh, they actually put out the uh, soundtrack on vinyl. I've seen that cruising the shelves at Zia Records. But this one is one of the uh, many uh, no-budget slasher gems in the Vinegar Syndrome back catalog. And I finally managed to pick up the slipcover edition. Splatter University. Also, we got, I'm down to quite a few more. Alright, we're going to do two from uh, Alfredo Zacharias next. I picked up a couple of his movies. Um, he's a Mexican director, I believe. And uh, he uh, put out Demonoid and The Bees. There we go. Like I said, director Alfredo Zacharias. Demonoid, 1981. That's a notorious uh, bad movie. It was another that was picked as a dog of the week on Siskel and Ebert. And uh, Siskel got the honors in that one. He did both of the uh, killer hand movies from around that time. This one being one of them. And of course the other is uh, the Oliver Stone film, The Hand, with Michael Caine. And uh, it's got a great uh, punchline to the review where, uh, we, he, where Gene Siskel says, and I quote him, And we never see what happens to the hand from Demonoid. But I got a theory. I believe that the hand from Demonoid and that killer hand from the other movie called The Hand, the two got together, shook hands, and came out fighting. So... <laughs> that one made me laugh pretty hard when I saw it on a, the sneak previews compilation of Dogs of the Week. I don't know which number it is, but this is a 1981 film. The Bees came out in 1978. And these are both, uh, they're both riding the coattails of movies that, frankly, didn't get that good a reputation to begin with. It's one thing for, like, a Tammy and the T-Rex to, uh, take off from Jurassic Park, or even a Unmasked Part 25 to take off from Friday the 13th. That series was making money pretty steadily throughout the course of its run. Kind of dipped with uh, Part 5, but... Parts 1 through 4, they made progressively more money as they came along. But these two, this one's supposed to be riding off The Hand from Oliver Stone, and it stars Samantha Egar from The Brood and Stuart Whitman. And this one's got John Saxon and John Carradine. So you got... This one is the one I want to watch first because of the star power of Carradine and Saxon. Like, Saxon was the reason I picked up Hellmaster while it was still available in that beautiful slipcover edition. And, uh, this is available in its director's cut, but of course, the film, of course, was writing the coattails of that Irwin Allen film, The Beat the Swarm, which also starred Michael Caine. So, I guess Alfredo Zacharias just loved watching Michael Caine movies and saying, hey, I could do that too. Or if he heard about these two Michael Caine vehicles coming on, he decided, I'm going to seize the moment. But this is what happens. Uh, the Bees has quite a bad reputation, and so does Demonoid, but I'll watch them for myself to find out. This one, incidentally, was also in one of the uh, 42nd Street Forever trailer comps. And Michael Gingold, who uh, directed the Spookies documentary, who I mentioned at the time, talks about when he went to see the film, there was a demonoid diploma going around that he wanted to get from the theatrical screening that he never got when he was in New York. They didn't mention that in the Siskel Neighbor Review. We're going to wrap this up pretty quick so I can watch some of these movies tonight. Here we go. Richard Casey, yep. Director of Horror House on Highway 5. This one sold out, but I picked it up when they found a few extra copies lying about. Hellbent from 1988, and it's, uh, 
I'm gonna have to watch that for myself. I'll get back to you on that one. But I do like Horror House on Highway 5 in its own nutty, screwed up way. And uh, here we got one that I picked up from a Scorpion releasing when they released it as part of the uh, K Katrina's Nightmare Theater line. Yeah, Katrina Lee Waters, I believe, the uh, host of the uh, DVD series that include Body Melt and Snapshot and several others. Satan Slave being one of them. Savage Streets, I believe, another one. I have quite a couple of them left. The Picks, Nothing But The Night. Here we go with Double Exposure from 1983, directed by William Byron Hillman. And uh, stars Sally Kirkland as a hooker. Cleavon Little from uh, Blazing Saddles and uh, One Spitten. It's got James Stacy, Seymour Cassell, one of the great actors. And uh, I haven't seen this since I picked up the uh, Scorpion releasing one. That one got lost, sadly. But when something's lost, something is found. And I picked up Double Exposure. I'm going to rewatch that. And last but not least, we talked about Robert Vincent O'Neill quite a couple times recently with the Angel Collection and the uh, Wonder Woman DVD releases. I picked up Wonder Woman. I missed the Angel one. There's still copies available, so I'll manage to pick that one up when I get the chance. And uh, this is uh, another one that he made, one of his earlier films from 1970 called Blood Mania. And it's on a double feature with Point of Terror and it's uh, starring Peter Carpenter, who uh, was one of the most enigmatic leading men of the era. But I picked this up largely because it was directed by... The first film was Robert Vincent O'Neill, who made Angel, so I wanted to check this out. This one was starting to sell pretty fast, so I checked it out too, for that reason. And uh, Blood Mania also stars uh, Maria de Aragon. So if you ever wanted to see uh, Greedo from Star Wars in the buff, this is the movie for you. And this one, I believe, has a, a bonus DVD featuring alternate TV versions for both films because they're pretty lurid uh, blood and nudity films. Pretty, yeah, the old drive-in staples. And uh, I think I'm at the end. This is the ones that I picked up. I'm going to put them back in the box. We're going to flash through them one more time. We're going to do uh, Blood Mania and Point of Terror from 1970 and 1971. First film directed by Robert Vincent O'Neill, and the Point of Terror was directed by Alex Nichol. And it's a double feature starring actor Peter Carpenter. Here we got Double Exposure from 1983, a Crown International release, by the by. They also distributed uh, My Chauffeur and Death Row Game Show. It's uh, directed by William Byron Hillman, and it's uh, filmed by a photographer, in case I mention it, a photographer who is uh, suspected in being a, a serial killer. Hellbent, from Richard Casey, from 1988. Like I said, the director of Horror House on Highway 5. From what I've heard about this, it's kind of a... It's kind of an 80s trash version of The Phantom of the Paradise, that old Brian De Palma film based on a, The Legend of Faust and about rock and roll music. And of course, Phantom of the Paradise is a classic. I'm not swearing. Let's see, we got Demonoid, from 1981, Alfredo Zacharias, as well as The Bees, from 1978. This is the uh, Not the Swarm. And this is not the hand, but yeah, they both uh, have interesting casts, like I said. John Saxon and John Carradine in The Bees, and Stuart Whitman and Samantha Egar in Demonoid. Here we got the campus slasher flick, Splatter University, from director Richard Haynes, from 1984. Distributed by your old pals at Troma. A classic of no-budget filmmaking. A trashy, consciously absurd 80s slasher that revels in the best and worst tropes of the genre. And you just know the Hysteria Lives group, Justin, Nathan, Eric, and Joseph, are going to do a commentary, and they don't disappoint. There is a commentary on the movie by the Hysteria Lives group. 
There is Raw Force, from 1982, directed by Edward Murphy. The uh, cannibal voodoo kung fu mega hybrid, starring Cameron Mitchell and uh, Camille Keaton, I forgot to mention. Of course, Jennifer Hills, from the original I Spit on Your Grave. She has a brief cameo as a topless girl. So, typecasting, I would say. Thankfully, she doesn't get raped four ways in the movie, like she didn't spit in your grave, but that one is a bit rougher. This one, Raw Force, looks like it's going to be a much breezier exploitation blast than I spit in your grave. Yeah. That one, I haven't watched in a long time, I spit in your grave, and for good reason. That one, you might want to, yeah, take a long vacation, and a long shower, perhaps, after you watch that one. Norman Warren's Bloody New Year from 1987. Bloody New Year. This one doesn't have that many extras, sadly. I think there was a, a British box set devoted to Warren, Warren's oeuvre, but this one only has a couple of bonus features. It's got a commentary track with Warren, but that's it. I think the uh, UK box set special edition had an interview with the lead actress, her name being, let's see, I think it was, was it Susie Atchison? I believe it's the actress who played the American, yeah, in that movie. The token American and the British group of uh, kids. I'll have to have you look that up for me. I'm sorry if I'm goofing the name. But yeah, check out the uh, Norman Warren box set if you're a big fan of his work. It's Terror, Prey, Inseminoid, Satan Slave, Bloody New Year 2. We got 1987's Berserker by Jefferson Richard. And it stars Sher what stars Sharon Engeman, who uh, I don't know if she's related to Paul Engeman. The guy who sings is Stop Your Cool Dude sounds like Paul Engeman in a way. But she, I believe, was in a Bon Jovi video. She Don't Know Me, I think, if you want to look that one up on YouTube. It was from, I believe, their first album. But it's got Plenty of bad rock music, it's got a bear, it's got George Buck Flower, and it's got a Viking. So, have a good time with that one, I know I will. We got Beyond the Door 3, directed by Jeff Quitney, produced by a video G.S. Anitis, who also produced another series of films that aren't related to each other, but heck, if you got a franchise, flaunt it, The Curse. The first film, of course, being uh, the Lovecraft adaptation with uh, directed director David Keefe and Will Wheaton and Claude Akins in the lead roles. Curse 2, of course, directed by, I don't remember, but it stars Jill Sholin, and it stars Bo Svensson, who is also in Beyond the Door 3. And uh, let's see, what do we got? Blood Theater and The Visitants double feature from Rick Sloan maker of the Vice Academy trilogy. You can pick that up, like I said, once the uh, all the orders for Black Friday are done, when they open up the shop. I think everybody who got the Black Friday purchases got a discount code as a means of uh, apology for such a delay in shipping. But Blood Theater of the Visitants, Blood Theater from 1984, and the, the Visitants from 1987. It's a double feature release, and Mary Warnov is in Blood Theater. And uh, it's got a commentary track by Hysteria Lives for Blood Theater. You can also watch a, rich, a Riff Tracks version if you so dare to please. I don't know if they did one for Raw Force, but if we don't get that, it's a missed opportunity to say the least. So I'm looking forward to finding out if there's a Riff Tracks for Raw Force. We got your Rudy Ray Moore.